So this short video will now start from a simple pendulum and build a double pendulum simulation. So this sort of demonstrates how powerful uh, the, this kind of a software uh, framework is. Because a simple pendulum is relatively easy to simulate e even from scratch, but double pendulum takes more time, usually writing equations of motion. But, but with this uh, Simscape multibody, you can uh, do a double pendulum simulation perhaps in just twice the amount of time that it takes to do a simple pendulum simulation. Okay, so here is actually a double pendulum simulation that I have already written. That's what that looks like. Don't look at it. And here is uh, an animation. Okay. So that's what that looks like. Okay, that looks like a double pendulum simulation. Um, now, how did we write this? What is the logic of uh, the simulation? Let me close this and essentially write from scratch. Um, let me create essentially a new Simulink model and then create a blank model. Um, create model, a blank Simulink model or a Simscape model, it's all the same. And then let me save it as double pendulum new. Um, and then to, uh, because we've already simulated a simple pendulum, let's just copy paste what we have there. Um, let me copy all this stuff, control C or command C, close it and paste it here. Okay, so that's a simple pendulum or a single pendulum. Let me remove the scope. Let me remove the um, torque inputs. Let me remove this actuation here, num. Apply. And then similarly, let me uh, remove the sensing part. Apply, okay. Just so that this is the very basic simple pendulum simulation okay um, by the way I use the word simple pendulum um, that word is very often used to represent a uh, denote a massless bar with a point mass at the end and the thing that we simulated is often called a compound pendulum a name I don't particularly like so maybe it's best to call it single pendulum and a double pendulum um, single pendulum is not a common term but that's okay okay so so that's basically a single pendulum and we want to convert it into a double pendulum let's do that okay so just recall um, if, if we do a, a simulation of this it looks like this and pause it take a look at it um, so this is the brick which is with its body fixed frame the revolute joint, uh, which is uh, this thing, and then the rigid transform between the two is basically a transformation that goes from the body fixed frame attached to the center of this block um, and uh, another frame that is at the end of this bar. Okay, and, the, and what this rigid transform achieves is basically creating this new frame to which we can attach this revolute joint. Okay, so we'll need to do the same thing when we are um, when we are going from well now there's a revolute joint here, but we want to attach another revolute joint here, right? We want to attach another revolute joint here. Um, so let us do that. Um, okay. So what do we do? We first um, go. We can go to the library browser if you want. We go to multi-body. We go to frames and transforms, and then we pick out this thing called the rigid transform. Okay, and then the rigid transform we again attach to the same thing, um, and then what we want to do? Double click. We want to translate so that we go to the other end of. 
the bar. Okay. Save. Then we can simulate this if you want. Stop it. Okay. Um, now, if we so there's two rigid transforms. This rigid transform, this is actually the pivot pivot point O, and there is a rigid transform here that uh, is the so there's a body fixed frame of reference. This is the pivot. This is the body fixed frame. Um, at the center of the body, center of mass of the body. So that's rigid transform that we had previously defined. And then there's another rigid transform which goes from here to here, right? That's the one that we just defined, okay? So let me actually, so it's, when, when we are looking at a picture like this, it's hard to know um, what is the pivot and what is not. So I might actually add some, um, uh, block here at the pivot. Let me actually do that. So let me create a new object. Uh, so, so I'm actually getting distracted here, not drawing the double pendulum, but just drawing a, um, let's say a cylindrical solid or even a brick uh, solid. And let me do the following thing, just for visual uh, convenience. And then I'm going to rotate it using Control R or Command R. And I'm going to attach it directly to the world frame. And then I'm just going to give it a small sort of size, 0.2. Point two, apply, and then I'm going to give it a different color, visual properties. I suppose the other one was blue, so let me give this sort of a uh, a bright red color, perhaps. Uh, apply, and then opacity could be 0.75 or something. Um, and we go okay. That's what that looks like. Um, and then if we save this and run this, okay. So I just created a block there that um, um, is sitting there just so that we know what the pivot is. Okay, so that's basically rigid transform two. It goes from this point to this point, rigid, uh, or rigid transform. What we what MATLAB is calling rigid transform one, uh, but let's actually call this rigid transform two, and let's call this let's call this uh, rigid transform one. Okay, um, now, so rigid transform one, rigid transform one is goes from the center of the body to the pivot, rigid transform two goes from the center of the body to the other end of the uh, pendulum. Uh, okay, so we now have access to this point, we again now um, want to attach a revolute joint there. So we can actually just copy paste this. So let's copy and paste it here. And uh, it already wants it to attach it to it. So, okay, so we've now drawn a revolute joint. Um, now we want to attach this revolute joint to another mass. Okay, so let's uh, actually copy this mass and put that in there. Now the question is, do we want to connect it directly or through another rigid transform? What does it mean to say connecting this directly? It means that this follower, this revolute joint, will be connected 
to the body fixed frame of this brick solid, which will be the center, which would be the center of mass of this brick solid. So if we do that, it's legitimate, but it's not quite what we wanted, I think. So let's just run that. So that's what that looks like. Okay, so because that revolute joint has been directly connected to the solid, so uh, it just looks like uh, we've been connected to the uh, center of uh, that second pendulum, which is not the conventional um, double pendulum. Um, so actually, let's change the color so that it looks nicer. Uh, visual properties, color, green, perhaps, okay, save, uh, we can run this, that's what that looks like, okay. Um, nothing intrinsically wrong with that except it's not what we were going for and um, we can um, Maybe make it a bit more transparent. Okay, so what we need here is another rigid transform that, well, gives us access uh, to the left end of, so we need a, a rigid transform that goes from the center of mass of this green bar to one end of that green bar, right? Uh, so it's exactly the same as this guy that we used in the past. So let's copy and paste that and put that in there. And we can connect this here and we can connect this here. Okay. And that's rigid transform three. And that basically does the same thing this did. Um, you go from the center of this block at negative 0.5, which is half the length of that pendulum, along the standard x-axis, okay? And now we save it, run it, and that's the double pendulum we wanted, okay? So it's pretty fast to do a double pendulum simulation with this framework. Um, once you have a simple pendulum, you can do a double pendulum very fast. And then doing a triple pendulum is incredibly fast, right? So now that we have a double pendulum, we copy all that and do a triple pendulum there. Okay, that's a triple pendulum. So it's very easy to scale up once you've done a double pendulum. Um, okay, I'll let you guys uh, play with this device. Um, now, if you wanted to change the revolute joint to some other kind of a joint, you can take a look at the triple pendulum a little bit if, if you want. By the way, the reason why it's showing these axes is because it's this is uh, selected. Uh, if we don't select it, um, we can um, uh, we can just select the wall frame and then just let it go, and that will be the thing that uh, shows up, I suppose. Okay. Okay. So we just saw how to do a double pendulum and then very quickly saw how to do a triple pendulum. It took about, I don't know, five seconds more to do a triple pendulum after you've done the double pendulum. Um, let me go back to the double pendulum. Um, so, so that's nice that we can go back to the double pendulum again, which is a quick deletion of, of those things. Um, that's convenient. Now, what if we wanted to change this to a different kind of a joint? We can do that, right? Um, or this thing. Uh, we can change this to a universal joint or a um, ball and socket joint, whatever. So I'll let you guys figure that out, um, how to do that. And then uh, we can have uh, a discussion about how you guys did it. Um, 
Another thing you can do, I think we already looked at actuation already. Uh, you should take a look at what else you can uh, change in these in these things. Uh, the, uh, like we discussed, state targets are basically the initial conditions. Uh, in this case, you give a position initial condition, which is basically the angle of that revolute joint. Um, and uh, velocity initial condition would be the angular rate. Uh, internal mechanics, uh, so it looks like it allows those joints to have some uh, spring stiffness, damping coefficient, equilibrium position for the spring, etc. So you can try to play with that. Uh, uh, if you give it a high spring stiffness, a high damping coefficient, and then have some equilibrium, let's say even zero degrees, you will find that that corresponding angle will try to uh, roughly stabilize around that uh, position. So it's as if you're trying to um, pull the system in a manner that um, this angle is at whatever equilibrium position you are at. So try to play with that. I guess we looked at it in a, in a previous homework in this course, uh, the effect of adding torsional springs and dampers at uh, revolute joints. So that's that. You can change that very quickly. Um, sensing, we already saw that. Um, if you wanted to output some quantity uh, related to that joint, namely the angle or angular velocity or angular acceleration, or if you gave it motion and then wanted to compute the torque, you can output the torque as well. Like we discussed, that's called inverse dynamics, right? So here, uh, we are implicitly computing the motion, but you can prescribe the motion and then compute the torque needed to achieve that motion. That would be called inverse dynamics, like I said. Um, so that's it. Um,